Give you a chance to get there. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, that's his appearance, or on his height, or of his stature, because I have refused him. The Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Isn't that true? So we can't judge people's hearts. We only can look at their fruits that they're bearing. But God looks at the heart. But what's on the inside will come out. Who believe that? You can put up a front for a long time, but what's on the inside will come out. I'll give you an example. I don't know if I told you that I've been coaching basketball. We got one more game Saturday. They're not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. We got one more game Saturday. But during this game Saturday, one of my players bought a $60 ball to the game. Why? I have no idea. But somebody stole the ball. And mom, was, and mom went livid. She had the whole place turned upside down. Who was going out the door? She was checking bags. Now this lady said she was a Christian. This is her exact words. She said, this, the Christian is gone out the door now. And boy, the words she pulled out would make a seller feel shame. And I really felt shame for her too. Because she was wearing the mask as a Christian. But when trouble came, her Christianity left. That means, did she have it? Or I'm not going to judge her. But she lost it. Maintain your integrity for Christ. So, Tuesday night yesterday, she was at practice apologizing. I'm like, don't apologize to me, you know. Apologize to the Lord. But what's on the inside will come out. Your mask will be put down. So the whole thing that Jesus was trying to say here, is verse 15. Look at verse 15. Right, so let's read 14. And when he had called all the people unto him, so that's why he wanted them to listen, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. So that's what he's saying, listen here. There is nothing from without a man that entereth into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entering into the house from the people, his disciple asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? So Jesus is giving them a biology lesson. He says, Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought. Purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. And from within our hearts of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. 
Wow. What is coming out of you? What are you displaying to others? Is your hypocrisy keeping people from coming to church? Or getting saved? Are you still wearing masks? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Are we serious for Christ? I think we're all at some point hypocritical. Would you agree? Especially when we say, hey, we love the Lord, but then you don't want to do anything for Him. Your walk is not matching your talk. He said, you're serving me with lip service. Where is the action? Isn't that what he's saying? Lip service. Or how about this? When trouble comes, you done told the entire world that you believe in Jesus Christ. He has the power to do great and wonderful things. And when you're going through a little trouble, you're falling to pieces. I was there. So I can tell you what I know. But what you have to do is refocus on Christ. You know, Christ didn't play with these people and just say, hey, all right, and just went along. He said, you are a hypocrite. Don't you like somebody that tells you the truth? Or do you like somebody, every time you go to them, I got some, I'm not going to say it. This guy is just such a yellow belly. I just hate to say it. He will not say no. He, he, he He's not defending. He skates around everything. You know, I want to go to somebody that's going to tell me like it is. Because that person's going to help me. Somebody just tell me what I want to hear is not going to help me. So Jesus was telling them what they needed to hear. And what they needed to hear is that they were defiled. Their heart hasn't been changed. Has your heart been changed for Jesus? That is the question you have to ask. Now we have an extensive list that it gave here. It gave all of these lists. We probably know what all those are. Evil thoughts. Conjuring up evil things to carry them out. Adultery. That's illicit sex by married persons. Fornication is illicit sex activities. Murders. We know what that is, right? Well, you you really do? Look up 1 John 3.15. Let's look that up. We know murder, you got to shoot a gun, stab somebody. But what does 1 John 3.15 say? Whoso hateth his brother is a what? How many people have you murdered? Is that real? And know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. How many people have you murdered? By hating something that God's created. Hating your brother. But the good news is, when you get your heart transplant, behold, all things are become what? New. So it's not applied to our account. Thank God for that. The Bible tells us to keep our heart. Proverbs 4.23 It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Because the heart is going to show exactly who you are. And what is it showing us? You need to be inspecting yourself. What is your heart showing you? Are you still wearing masks? Are you still being hypocritical? Asking people to do things that you're not? I'll give you another example. Um, the privileged church I, I belong to, a new guy, a new pastor came in. And this scripture is so real. Because he came in, I was a leader of the soul winning team. Well, he came in 
and drew up a covenant agreement between him, you, and God. And he had all these things listed that you had to do to be, continue to be a leader. The interesting thing, he wasn't doing them. <laughs> so, you know, I talked to him one-on-one, talked to the deacons, took them before the church, and nothing happened. But he said that if you do not sign this covenant agreement, all the leaders would, can not be leaders anymore. Wow. He put the traditions of man above God's word. And I was shocked that God's people fell for it. And one of the requirements was you had to get 5% of your tithes. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why are we not doing 10%? If you're going to do it, do it at least what God said. And he said these words, and that's when I knew I had to jump ship. He said, you should love me better. I'm giving you a break. God, I, I'm not lying. If I did have a stone, I think I would have plumped here. Just threw it at him. But I just could not believe that. But when you say he put his stuff above God's. When God has blessed people to be in a position and he already qualified them by the congregation, what is man to do anything with that? This is why you have to know your word, people. Don't let man, because what they were trying to do is bound you. God said he set you free. And whom the Son has set free is what? Free. free indeed. Don't let anyone bind you up with the word of God. It's free. And that's what the Jews was trying to do, was bind the people up with all these laws. And it was actually turning people away. They'd actually put a shield around the word of God where the people couldn't even get to the word. But when Jesus done away with the law... That's why they wanted to kill him. They're like, hey man, this is our butter, grave in butter, whatever you said. <laughs> they said, hey, now you're coming here messing things up. But Jesus says, not the law. It's for by grace or you saved through faith. Only thing I want you to get tonight out of here is it's not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside. Have your heart changed. For Christ. So I want to, you know, just take this opportunity. I'm going to go in and close. And I think we want to open up the altar tonight. Since we're talking about a heart transplant here. I want you to think about what you've been doing. Have you been hiding behind that mask? Have you been hypocritical? Have you been overly hypocritical of someone and putting rules on them that you yourself have not been keeping? I want you to think about that. Or have you been hypocritical in your faith? Where you're asking God to do something, but yet you're not believing it. This hit me hard. I say, Lord God, if I, if, if I worship you as the God you are, I have to believe that you can do it. Matter of fact, he said, if you come to him, you must believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Do you believe that God will do what he says? And I'll close with that. And we're going to say the altar is open. If, you, if the Lord spoke to you tonight, and you want to come down to the altar and say, Lord God, forgive me. I'll be the first one down here. I'm the first one down here. So let's go ahead and stand. You can go ahead and stand. And if the Lord spoke to you, and you want to come down and just... Ask the Lord to help you be a better Christian. Forgive you of your hypocritical actions. The altar is open. Nobody's moving. The whole church should have been down here. I'll be honest with you. The whole church should have been down here. Because uh, we all need prayer and ask the Lord to forgive us from our hypocritical actions that we have done. Because it's all what's on the inside that will come out. So I'm going to take a minute and kneel down here and pray with those that are coming. Thank God if you can't kneel, you can sit on the front row. But we need prayer. Amen. Thank God for this message tonight. I tell you, it's